And I'm delighted to be joined now here by former Mayor of Kilkenny, uh, Mary Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Um, Mary, we're delighted to have you here on the Irish Political Roundup again. Uh, you've had a look at the tallies. Um, what, what do you make of everything so far? Well, I think at the minute there's a bit of confusion. Uh, of course, we all have our own favourites, Paul. Yeah. Uh, and I'm delighted for Sean O'Hargan. Uh, uh, and I will say about Sean O'Hargan, he would make an excellent councillor. He's up front, he's honest. If he says he can do it, he'll do it. And that, but I would have liked to see more females getting in. Yeah. Um, but then it's, I know it's difficult for women uh, in politics, let it be local or national. Uh, it takes up a lot of time, and if you're married or have children, whatever the case may be, it's very difficult. It, it is very difficult. We, I did a kind of a quick little tally of said the outgoing councillors, and a lot of them are either retired or, or self employed. So it's nearly that's if you're going to try to attract more people into politics, especially women, you know, that's that's going to be that's that's. Set up as a challenge. For that, though, Paul, is in school. The education system in this country doesn't cater uh, for politics, let it be local or national. And I think through that transition year, there's so much can be done uh, with those young people uh, around politics and the importance of being involved and the importance of using their vote. Now, according to, to the, the, the statistics, it was only really a 50% turnout in Kilkenny. I mean, if, if you look at our own statistics, we have about 75% of young people, and the rest is made up of, of, of all of us, OAPs, you know, that have been there and done that, and uh, would have been stringent about getting up there and going down there and casting your vote. Now, I was there yesterday morning quite early, and the thing I was listening to with the older people, as I was collecting my pension, <laughs> was... <laughs> that the farm was, there was too many people on the farm. Yeah. And they had their minds made up before they went in. Yeah. And it was to try and find them on the farm. They found that difficult. 20 candidates running for Kilkenny City, so this cow's going to take a while. I think, for me, it proves that the government were wrong when they took away the borough councils. Yeah. And I know the borough council was only made up of 12. But for me, and I'll say it openly and outright, it was a stupid, stupid idea. You look at the city at the moment. How many derelict sites are in and amongst their high street? Rates have gone up. Rents have gone up. Businesses cannot afford what's going on uh, within the city. And I mean, I'm born, bred and reared, and I'm lucky if I go into the city now once a month. Yeah. Parking is restricted or it's too expensive. They can't park on the high street. Uh, uh, bicycles are going to either side, up and down. Uh, I wish to God somebody would tell people that those crossings in high street are courtesy crossings. They're supposed to stand and let the traffic stop for them. Not the other way around where you're slapping brakes on in cars and running across those. those. Uh, the traffic lights at the parade could do with a little bit of a change uh, for to get traffic moving more swiftly. Uh, there's constantly a backup in Patrick Street and up by Kilkenny Castle. Uh, having to get into John Street and go all the way around the Ring Road or go down by John's stores and get up that bridge there, you're still caught in traffic. And then you're going back up John Street, you can't get parking. Uh, anywhere along there, John's Green is full, that's five euro a day. Uh, 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 up at the back of Guinness, that's five euros a day. Then you have outside the local supermarkets there. When the new hotel goes in at the station, that parking is going to be gone as well. Yeah. So I think when they did away with the borough councils and gave this power over to the county councils, that was to the detriment of the Kenny City. Yeah, yeah. As in a lot of cases, the, the borough council was cash rich and the council was cash poor. So, putting, by abolishing it, by, a, by abolishing it, you know, the council got a boost. Oh, the council got a boost. But also, so did the rural villages get a boost. Whereas the city was left without. And I think it's because there are only six, really, city sitting councillors. And if there's 26 sitting, six against 20 is not going to win. No, no. And we need money in the city. Uh, I'm not saying bring back, I don't know, 
by the bringing back the Borough Council at this stage would work. Maybe it would. But I still feel it was the, the most stupidest mistake that was ever made was putting, taking away the Borough Council power. And we have a city hall up there, and I'd say there's about 10, 10 staff working up there. The electricity bill, I'd say, is bigger than the salaries. Yeah. You know, so... No yeah. common sense. Common sense is gone. Absolutely. Roshan, you've been sitting here um, listening to Mary. Have you any thoughts on what, what she may have said? I've been a great admirer of uh, my Fitzpatrick, former Labour Party representative and county councillor, mayor, and many, many more. Uh, what you've done for ch women and children in Kilkenny. Mm. And everybody, when I was on the local radio, everybody... Whenever Mary Fitzpatrick, you came on, whatever you had, whenever you came on, what you have to say, you bring a lot of value and common sense. Well, that's what's missing in today's world, is common sense and, and common sense thinking. What I did, I didn't do for profile. You have to have a heart. You have to have commitment and you have to have humanity. And above all else, you have to have respect of people. If you don't respect people and where they're at, we all have our own stories to tell. And we can all host a pity party if we feel like it. But the majority of people that I work side by side with and, and, and in the local authority areas, I love those local authority areas. I've worked with young, young boys, young girls. Uh, lone parents were, were great. I found them and the older generation, yeah. and the stories they would tell you, and they would tell you to F off if you were tormenting them. You know, and, and it's the respect I had for people, I think, that won me all along on the way. And even today, 20 years later, my children would say to me, oh, Mammy, someone was asking for you. I wouldn't have a notion who they'd be talking about. I'd be saying, hold on there now a minute, where are they from, or who was their mother, who was their father? And I could go back that way. But um, I do miss meeting the local public. Uh, I don't go down the high street that often. Health hasn't been great with me. But uh, I used to be able to drive up and in around the communities and go in and chat and talk to all of the people. I do miss that. But I will get back on my feet and I will do it. And Mari, you know, you were many, many achievements with you and... Everyone loves and always talks about the story between you, Margaret Tynan, and all the other women in no. the county council. All oh, this, Margaret Tynan was an amazing woman. Uh, Carmel Boyd was another amazing woman. And um, over at Margaret Tynan, Margaret Tynan could phone you. Something might have gone on at the, county, at, the at the corporation meeting. Get yourself over here tomorrow and explain. I wasn't even fine again, but our team. <laughs> And I'd go over anyway, and she should have uh, Carmel Boyd, Elaine Bradshaw, Margaret Tynan, and myself. And, of course, Elaine would have to be getting the coffee and the tea and the biscuits and all ready. And Margaret would start, and then Carmel Boyd would start on top of that. And she would end up in a row. Yeah. And then someone would check out the whiskey or the brandy, whatever the case may be. And then Margaret could say to you at 2 o'clock in the morning, now here, we're going to bed. And they put you out. <laughs> and they'd lean you up against the window. And I'd phone one of mine. I used to be thinking, which one would I phone now that would be the most polite to me in this condition? Anyway, I, I phoned Nicola, the eldest. And she phoned me, she said, me, you don't have that power time again. How many times have I told you? <laughs> Stay out of that place. And I thought, just come and get me because the ground is coming up to meet me, you know. But, uh, but stories like that are... Maybe you could be up in the castle, or it could be anywhere, and Margaret trying in a little bit, shout at you. Get over here. Paddy Donnelly and herself, they were great. Like, uh, I remember a woman looking for a house one time. She couldn't get past Tony Walsh. Tony was saying, oh, well, no, no, she's on the list and the whole lot. And she said, is that fell upstairs? This was in John's Green. And Tony said, oh, he's busy there now, he's having a meeting. Well, so am I, she said. And up that stairs, she found it. Shoved open the door and Paddy Donnelly was there. I want you. <coughs> and we said to the man, Excuse me. And the man said, I think I'll finish up and go. I know what they're looking for. <laughs> and Mari, you know, 
you know, for many years, and Paul and I, we've interviewed you, Mary Hilda, and Betty Manning. You were a great team within the County Council. Oh, gosh, we were a great team. And, 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 and again, we often conferred with each other uh, about different issues or different problems that were coming up. Now, Betty wasn't in the council, but if she had something that she needed saying, she would say it to Mary Hilda, and Mary Hilda would deliver. But within the corporation itself, Betty and I got on very, very well. Very well. And, and, and I'll tell you an incident that happened. Many, many. Betty might not remember it. But halfway through the meeting, Betty might look across at me and give me a nod for a cigarette. And uh, she'd slip out first. Or maybe I'd go first. But we always made it to the toilets. And as you know, in the corporation, the windows were very small. And uh, we'd have to stand on the toilet bowl. And we'd be pulling fags and blowing smoke out through this small window. Unbeknownst to us, Donal O'Brien went along and got smoke alarms put into the place. <laughs> and we're standing on top of this toilet, blowing smoke to the clouds, having a discussion, an intellectual discussion. <laughs> and the next thing the alarms went off. Two of us jumped down. She ran back to the meeting. I ran down to the front door and came back up a few minutes after. And Donal O'Brien excused himself from the lads and he came down along and he said, I knew I'd catch the two of ye. I knew it was the two of ye were smoking. <laughs> but, uh, you know, good memories, good memories, a uh, uh, good time. Uh, I enjoyed every minute that I was there and I had great respect for the executive as in, and I know I had plenty of arguments with them, but I had respect for them as they had for me and all of the councillors. Um, Paul Cody, all of them, they were brilliant. They were brilliant. Mari, you know, you've, as we said, you've so many achievements. Which would be, could you name some of the achievements you've been so, most proud of? See, I'm not sure everyone rushing to look back or go back. And I think the reason that these achievements, there's, we were brought up in hard times. Uh, you know, my, my, my father did the best he could for to work. My mother was an amazing woman. She put food on the table. We had problems in school with the nuns. Dear God, did we have problems with the nuns. And I was the mouthy one in the class. Uh, seemingly, I used to cause quite a bit of a stir in the class. And I hated bullies. I, I hated being dictated to. And I think as I grew up and went along within community and community development, I could see that the money was coming into the city, but the executives were deciding what was going to be done with it within a community setting. Instead of coming into the community and saying, well, now we have this amount of money, what would you see as being of benefit to you? And I couldn't take that kind of dictatorial attitude back then. And that's why I formed so many residence committees. And, and I remember at one stage, the people in Ashley Park, their toilets were up the back. And I remember forming them and training them up into a committee because going to any of these places as one person on your own, you need the committee behind you. And uh, as we know, big changes uh, uh, happened then in Ashley Park uh, after that. And wonderful, wonderful residents were up there at that time. They're still there, I'm sure. But that's what gave me the fight. And I suppose being stood on a corridor at one stage and being poked in the shoulder and told, your husband's going to die and there's nothing you or I can do about it. And, and uh, there was another friend with me that night. And I never, I never forgot that. And there was two sisters, uh, ladies uh, uh, on the wards. And uh, they came to me after and they said, you fight this, you fight this. You know, but... Things were different way back then. And you had to look up to these people. Or because they were of a certain level or a certain education, they looked down on you. And that's not the way life is. Because as one big top fella said to me one time, I have letters after my name. So I said, we'll all have letters. <laughs> what do you mean, he said. R.I.P., he said, is going to be written on the headstone. <laughs> I said, so I'll have letters, every bit as good as yours. And uh, he just said, as much as told me to leave. <laughs> so. And did, did, did my Fitzpatrick leave? Oh, I did, and I brought the door with me. 
full bang on the way out. You know, these were things that I was proud of that I did. I fought for the underdog all the, all of the time, and I still would. And I suppose the passion in my life at the moment are the lone parents. Yeah. I think they're doing an amazing job uh, uh, of raising children on their own as one. And you have other people that are couples and they're not able to do it, can't get it right. But they're quick enough to condemn the lone parents. And anything goes wrong in this country, oh, that's the lone parent, yeah. And do you, do you, uh, do you see a change in the social bias towards lone pa pa parents or do you see it the same or worse? Or how do you see the difference in the bias between lone parents uh, years ago and now? I think enough of people stand up for the lone parents. Everything is fine. I think there is a change. There is a change. And it's more accepting. Because who are we to throw stones? We're all trying to raise a family. Uh, uh, we're all trying to do the best we can. Um, there's a few laws I'd like to see changing now. Uh, uh, this thing of, 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 of um, making children and then walking off and picking up with another one and making another few children there. You know, and these children growing up with no father's name. Who's to say that they won't meet one another in years to come? Get married and, of course, then we'll have disability. Uh, you know, though, that the government needs to do something uh, uh, around all of this. That if you are responsible for a child that you pay your share for it and you just don't walk away and make more up with Mary or Tommy or whoever it is your moment, you know, that's that's not good enough. And that's one of the biggest changes I would like to see uh, within the social welfare system, that these men are made accountable. And women too, because they walk away and leave their children with men. Uh, you know, uh, and I think if we can combat that, there will be more respect for the whole system that we have in this country. And what do you think of the educational system now compared to what it was? Because you were all, always close to the educational system yourself. No, after torture, I was gone out of school. Uh, I think, what was it at that time? The, the group search. That's what it was. I did the group search and my mother said to me, of a tourist day, here, you go in there tomorrow, tell them you're not going back anymore, you have a job. And... Of course, I had to walk into a job then, and I'm sure I was there for years. But then I played sport, and that kept me going. Uh, it satisfied me all along, and I had very good friends, and dancing uh, was the thing. Um, what? I'm after forgetting the question. What about the ETB? You were very highly involved in the beach. Oh, I was. I your education is, 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 is the only way out of any poverty trap, uh, I feel. Um, the youngsters going to the vocational schools... Uh, and all of the schools, I mean, there's there's great work goes on in those secondary schools. And just because you don't have your leave in search with seven A's or B's or whatever it is, we're all born with different skills. I could not have stayed in school. I didn't like it. But that didn't say that I was stupid or I was whatever. It's like you could ask a doctor to change it a tyre on a bicycle, a puncture, and he'd look at you blankly. The same way as you couldn't ask the chap that's fixing the puncture to operate. So we all have different skills, and it's to appreciate the skills that we have and respect other people's skills. Because there's a lot of things I couldn't do. Not that I'd want to do them, but I don't. But at the same time, I would not disrespect anyone for trying. The education system is set up in a way now where young people have access to it. And it's not all about A's, B's and C's or whatever uh, the situation is. I think employers have, have, have another uh, uh, thing here now. They are all looking for these um, leave inserts. Uh, did you do your leave insert? Uh, I can't take you on for your apprenticeship. Now, this is what I have heard is going on. I have no concrete proof for that. If a chap is willing to go in there and be a painter or a mechanic or whatever, he's interested in what he's doing. Take him on. Same with the girls. Let him into the painting. They do love painting. They're quite good at it too. The few that I know. Um, give them the chance. Give them the opportunities. They will work. 
No, they might not be giving out about the money. <laughs> but and if you think about it, bringing me on to something else. Sorry now, lads, I'm hogging this. And the young apprentice, the money he's getting. Yeah. Someone on the dole is getting more. So what's the option? You stay on the dole or you go and get an apprenticeship. And the apprenticeship in the long term is going to benefit you more but in the short term the dole will. We're very short of tradesmen right now in the country. You can't get a tradesman. And so there's a gap in, in the whole employment system, educational system and employment system. So would you agree then we need to start paying apprenticeships more we to do. keep them in? We do. We need to start paying them the race, a livable race, because the majority of them boys and girls are living at home. They have to contribute uh, to the house. They have to hand up X amount of money. But also, if they have to travel to a job, they need a car, they need insurance, they need tax, they need to eat. As we all know, young people would eat the rocks of on if, if you put it down to them. And, you know, we're not respecting their initiatives in going in for a, a, an apprenticeship as opposed to going in to sign on to social welfare. Uh, you know, our system is very generous in this country, very, very generous. Uh, and I think it needs to be looked at and overhauled. Yeah, definitely. I don't know what more we. I don't know more what more we can add, add to that. But Mary, thanks a million for taking the time to talk here on the Irish Political Roundup, and we wish you every health and success Thank into you. the future. Great to see you all. But anyway, I, I hope this. No.